Hey yo, what's good? It's Dino here and we're back with another video full of crazy clips from all over the world. I appreciate everybody for coming through and I hope everybody's doing well. Let's hop right into it. Why was a functionable, movable aircraft that can move in any direction hovered, pivot, and accelerate up to 60 miles per hour, abandoned in the 1980s. It could stop mid-air and hover, accelerate from its stopped position. To most people, this type of technology would seem inconceivable, or even alien in origin. Nonetheless, it would revolutionize the travel industry. Imagine traveling to work, avoiding traffic completely. It can go as high as 10,000 feet and can operate as long as 30 minutes before having to refuel. And this was back in the 1980s. Imagine the improvements on the longevity had research continued on this vehicle. So why then was research stopped and nothing else was heard of it? Oh, no. Very few people know this existed. Research on the subject reveals that the US government said it was cost insufficient and inferior to the helicopter. Utterly ridiculous, most would think, but very few people know about it. It's known as the Wasp Exjet, Williams Aerial Space Platform, or Flying Pulpit. <laughs> it is controlled simply by shifting your body weight in the direction of your desired intent, yet it is inferior to a helicopter? Very confused here. This makes you wonder what other technologies were suppressed, like the water-fueled car that runs on water alone. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very curious about which technologies have been suppressed. I remember seeing a lot about these platforms. There was a guy that was like using the uh, casings of the beetle exoskeleton and magnets and electricity and stuff to create basically what you just saw on the screen. And uh, all that information was really cool. I've always wanted to see more on it. So. I can't tell if that was a doctored video or not, but uh, it was pretty cool. Chinese, I've had a dead man trigger of stuff I'm holding back. That if something happens to me, that hits the internet, and every celebrity that supports what we're doing that can reach a billion people, they get it, and they put it out on Instagram, and boom. You know, and this is stuff they do not want out. Mm -hmm. It's names, it's stuff that I have not released, and where, and who. But people say, why don't you release it? I said, well, you know, this is one of my insurance policies. But what these inventors don't get is that they don't do that. They have no sec ops. So they have no security protocols. They just think I have a better mousetrap. The world's going to beat a path to my door. Not true. When in reality, Murder Incorporated beats a path to right. their door. Right, right, right. <laughs> Moving on. While you were distracted by all this Trump nonsense, President Biden signed his first veto, and you'll never guess the conspiracy theorists are right again. So President Biden celebrated the fact that he used his veto power to strike down a bipartisan bill mainly focused on ESG, environmental, social, and corporate governance laws. Basically, remember what we talked about before, the social credit system, where you're not going to be able to do anything if, say, you post a tweet that the government doesn't like or maybe your bank doesn't like? Mm -hmm. ESG is specifically focused on those sort of things, especially for corporations. It's the start of a social credit system, and the president, against both the House and the Senate that represent the American people, used his plenary veto power in order to stop the bill. Interesting. Ask yourself why. But they opened up a grave in South America. The grave was probably made about a 1,000 years ago. Uh, uh, and found a this little uh, gold artifact in there. You can see it next to the dime for scale. Little uh, looks like an airplane about this big. The Smithsonian has it, and they have it labeled as a stylized insect. A stylized insect, he says. <laughs> because they got this preconceived idea: ancient man was dumb, modern man is smart. They could not possibly have known about airplanes a thousand years ago, and yet. Here they've got one. That's not a stylized insect. I'm sorry, they knew about 
flight. An Egyptian tomb was opened as 2100 years old, and it also had an airplane in it, a little model glider. How did they know about airplanes over 2000 years ago? Apparently they knew about electricity a long time ago because this battery uh, was found in Iraq from about uh, 2000 years ago. The Egyptians must have known about electricity. This hieroglyphic shows what appears to be wires and a generator or something hooked up to these uh, two snakes. Either the snakes are producing the electricity or they're putting the electricity into the snakes. I don't know, but they must have known about uh, electricity a long time ago. They found a sunken ship in the Aegean Sea, which is near Greece in the Mediterranean. And there was uh, encrusted on there what appeared to be an analog computing device. This is uh, 2,100 years ago. This hammer was found in uh, rock supposed to be 400 million years old by a lady in Texas. Battelle Laboratory said it's 96.6% iron, 2.6% chlorine, 0.74% sulfur. Mm -hmm. No carbon. And yet it is stainless steel. It won't, it won't, rot. It won't rust. Before the flood came, the Bible says the people lived to be over 900 years old. You could learn a lot in 900 years. Plus, when you consider a couple other factors, they lived in a perfect environment. They would have had much higher IQs, much uh, less to do as far as just daily things you have to do just to live. Most of those things are taken care of in the Garden of Eden. Don't need a house. You got perfect weather. So they can devote all their time to uh, study or learning things. Plus, Adam came pre-programmed from the hand of God, probably had an incredibly high IQ. And he got to walk and talk with God for a while till he sinned, maybe a hundred years, we don't know. But uh, got to walk and talk with God. The other factor to consider is Adam lived long enough to know his great, 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 great grandson. Noah's daddy could have known Adam for 56 years. So you get not only a much greater starting, uh, a much higher starting point, they already knew a lot because God pre-programmed it into Adam. Plus they lived a long time and could learn a lot more. Plus they lived long enough to pass this on to many generations. Today, an awful lot of knowledge goes to the grave. You know, about the time you know it all, you mm -hmm. die. Uh, or you, by the time you know a bunch of stuff, you die. Imagine if guys like Einstein could live, you know, eight or nine hundred years. How much could they, how much knowledge could they accumulate in a brain like that? So that's one for one of the commenters in the last video. It was like, think about the technology we have versus the stuff that they had back then and like, blah, 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 make the comparison. Well, there's your comparison. Like, don't think that I don't pay attention. <laughs> um, we just have a different form of the same exact technology. Um, we don't even understand how their technology functions. Ooh, okay. That was close. We are summoning the demon. What is a portal? Janus is this double-headed god, and it's the god of the doorways, and this is where January comes into play. This is Stonehenge. Aerial view, a key. The key opens the door to the portal. The Vatican at Disneyland. Janus, you can see he has the key and the two faces. Here's Janus for January. This is for Aquarius. We're going into it. You can see the double-headed god with the key. This is all about doorways and portals. Janus. This is where the word janitor comes from. And what is a janitor known for? Having all the keys. This goes back to ancient Samaria, double-headed faces. Here's the Shamash tablet, eight-pointed star right here, which was the gateway. This is where the gods could travel through this portal, the Polaris portal. CERN also has the eight-pointed star of Polaris, and they're the ones opening up the portals, just like in the show Stranger Things. All right, so this is going to get wild, everybody, so buckle your seatbelts. Keys open doors. We've got the show Lock and Key which is all about portals. The door is the portal, the Stargate. It is the Omega logo, the last event that will take place. Mm -hmm. Here's the Masonic compass with Polaris at the top. Here's the show Stargate right here. Here's the Stargate, the portal, and you got the two circles because that's how CERN is set up with the two circles. 2001 Space Odyssey, you see that key. It's a tower with Polaris at the top. And I got this from Tommy Truthful's site, so shout out to him. Here you can see the Vatican key with Polaris, the eight-pointed star, and the sun cross in the middle. 
which is for the four corners. And right in the middle of the four corners is the volcano that we see right here in Lord of the Rings, the volcano. This goes into Polaris and it also goes into some sexual symbology as well. You see it here at Disneyland. Shout out to the One on One podcast. You can see that eight in the key in the sun cross in the tower. Here's Hyperborea, the old map of the North Pole. You got the four corners, the Sun Cross. In the middle is the volcano. Here's Star Wars, Polaris right back here, and the eight different points. Pretty wild because even Venus is connected to this, which is known as Lucifer. And Venus, every eight years, makes a pentagram in the sky as the rabbit hole is the portal going down the rabbit hole. Here's 2001 Space Odyssey, them going into the portal, Polaris Star, and this is in all of Stanley Kubrick's films. Here's Edward Scissorhand, you got that key in there. The community down below and at the top was the tower, like the Disney Tower. So Wednesday is trending right now. He's pretty adamant about that key symbology having to do with portals and stargates. Um, I wouldn't doubt it, to be honest. Look at what CERN is doing. Like, it's wild to think about. Um, I definitely believe some sort of stargate exists, some sort of wormhole technology or something like that. Space. The next ultimate destination is... No, more. the next one. Congressman, the next destination, as I said before, is the International Space Station. And we've All right, got let's to do that not be trite, then. What is the one after that? It's Mars. So there's nothing in between, as far as you're concerned. But there are intermediate stops what are the they? way there. What's the next one? The moon is a, is a destination. Lagrange points are destinations. Which one is next? You mean, where do we go immediately next? Is that, is that the question? That's what next means. <laughs> Congressman, I, we are in the process of developing a program. I will, ha I will have to be able to give you the details, and I will come back and make it for the record in the coming months. So why are we even talking about how to get to the next destination? We don't even know what that is. Congressman, we do know what it is. We know what, what it is. What is it? Congressman, I, you know, we can go back and forth uh, forever. We seem to have to here. I'm looking for an answer. <laughs> okay. The next destination in the Constellation program was the moon. The moon. Okay. Damn, man. Never get a straight answer for sure. They just beat around the bush all day long. Like, what's new here, NASA? I remember sometime we do 10 episodes for my show. And in this last season, um, I was hitting a block, right? I, I was like, oh, I'm not doing it right. Right. So I went in the corner and then I was looking at the wall and I was like, come on, devil. Come on, devil. Right. Mm -hmm. get, come to me. Like, come to me. Because I had to do something like crazy, right? Had nightmares for a month. Mm -hmm. So it does come to it or after? After. after. Like, I had nightmares every day. Like, I just felt, I felt that energy. Oh, interesting. You know, and I had to pray and do all this stuff to like get rid of it. And, you know, you call your mom up and you're like, bring me back to life. And mm -hmm. that stuff is real. That's yes, sir. That stuff is real for real. I got some of my own experiences I could go into. Is that Priya? <laughs> oh my god, it is. Oh my god. The thing is huge, bro. That's terrifying. No way. Bro, y'all notice how like rappers are getting their nails painted all of a sudden? Y'all notice your favorite celebrities have their nails painted all types of colors. I'm going to explain to you why they're doing this. They are trying to push an agenda for men to be more feminine. This way it makes it harder for us to make decisions. And we are also confused. This is just bringing confusion. Painted nails only used to be for women. Now we have men doing it. And now soon, we're going to have men doing a lot of things that only women should be doing. This right here is not normal. I don't know why they're trying to normalize this. This is not normal. Stop hopping on these trends. They're trying to make you more feminine. Peace and love. Follow me for more content. All right, fair point. Those examples you gave were pretty good examples. But like, I get a lot of shit for my hair all the time. All right, because I do pastel purple hair. 
And like, I'm gonna be honest with you, me having purple hair does not mean that I'm being more effeminate. It does not mean that uh, anything really. It just means I like the color purple and I color my hair purple. So like, whatever, I could give a shit less what people think. If you wanna think it's making me more effeminate, that's on you. But I'm a good old boy who grew up in the South. I know how to chop trees and build houses and run chainsaws and tractors and backhoes, just like any other good old boy. I just prefer to have purple hair. I'm kind of a nerd. Oh well. <laughs> that we're using now the government has tech that's like light years away have you ever Ooh. seen some shit that like has blown your mind that Ooh, a little bit i think I, I asked neil degrasse tyson kind of a similar question yeah. along the same lines and he's like yeah there's endless examples in the space programs and things like that as far as what i've seen basically a lot of these companies as part of their like showboating a little bit and like making you feel good they'll show you the behind the scenes of things and like unreleased products and like what went into making some stuff i've seen some stuff that is like like really far out that they started with and then they mm -hmm. sort of like shaved down into a normal looking product and some of that is really curious like in the car world there's crazy concepts in the uh well, tell, laptop tell world tell oh, us, tell I, us. come on give us a little like, something the car under the tarp that i can't talk about you know there's a lot of those that are like yeah we started with this and sometimes they show that at like ces they'll show you like a crazy concept car that's never going to exist yeah and they'll go damn that'd be kind of cool yeah yeah and then that car never ships but then a year later one with the same name will ship that looks kind of a little bit like it yeah. but not really Yep, yep, that's what they do, man. That's just what they do. That's advertising. That's how it works. US 6506148B2. That's a patent you need to go look up. Google it right now. It's actually technology in order to use your television or your cell phone to do mind control. They can mm -hmm. transmit electromagnetic fields. They call it magnetotherapy in order to resonant frequency the parts of your brain using cymatics to change your mood or do versions of mind control. Uh, that even lists out the type of hertz and the sensory resonance that they do. Go look it up. But that's not all. In fact, one of the lead scientists at a place I've been researching called Mount Wilson Ranch, who also went to Skinwalker Ranch mm -hmm. with Hal Putoff and Jacques Vallée and Colonel Alexander. There's, look at this, 13 pages of patents that go clear back into the early 1990s and late 80s. And these are like directed energy weapon systems. Yes, sir. These can do everything from detect troops hiding underground or in the jungle and cave systems. It can monitor submarines. They got all it kinds of tools. things man. are in the sky. It can transmit EMPs. Yep. It can levitate with anti-gravity uh, effects and everything. They can even focus it to make shadow figures, fake UFOs. They can control the weather. They can even make groups of people or troops turn invisible. Yeah, all no the joke. patents, all of the there, patents are in here and they go clear back. And this is the lead scientist who we have photos of uh, doing all kinds of stuff. Look at this one. Detection of guerrilla forces in a jungle environment. So if there's right. like a whole bunch of people in the jungle or hiding underground or whatever, this guy, Tim Ryan, has all the patents. And he was, no joke, one of the lead scientists with uh, Hal Putoff. If you don't remember who Hal Putoff is, he's the one who is working with Tom DeLong at To The Stars Academy. There's mm -hmm. Jacques Vallée. There's Tim Ryan right there. Here they are at Mount Wilson. They were up there with Bigelow from Sarah. There's t Dr. Tim Ryan, 1996. All those patents were given to Tim Ryan um, before that, back in the early 90s and a few years before. So there he is. This is the motel up at Mount Wilson Ranch. That's me in front of the room that Bigelow says he saw a ghost in. Uh, it's a cool place. You could actually go Look visit there. Look at but this check out electric what we found. spacecraft journal. 1994 October. Mm -hmm. Look at this. It's a flying saucer and all the physics of how to do it. Gravitational control. And look, in Forbidden Science, uh, Jacques Vallée mm -hmm. in Secret 1996, two years later after this, this is, was written, they were developing you've got clear back Dr. In the Tim 80s. Ryan from Sarah up here at Mount Wilson Ranch with Bob Bigelow and Hal Putoff. That's where I'm at right now at Mount Wilson Ranch where these guys are in the parking lot. So in 1996, You've got Tim Ryan up here at Mount Wilson Ranch. But two years before, he was writing this article and getting funding for patents on experimental investigations of an electromagnetic gravitational interaction. Let's go to page 15. 
Holy smokes, look at this. They were might working have found on anti-gravity devices. Maybe that's why they were up here. What the heck? Anti-gravity devices. And in this book, Future War, page 102, that same doctor in uh, for the team, Sarah, it goes into talking about electro-neurophysiology and all of the abilities in order to basically read your mind, use infrasound, and they can read your mind. They can use inception to implant false hallucinations and experiences, make you think you've been abducted. And they've had this technology going clear back into the Bigelow era. Yep, 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 yep. I wrote a paper on that for a speech <laughs> about the future and the technology. And it got mixed, got a mixed reception. People were like, well, that's scary. It sounded like a sci-fi movie, to be honest with you. But it's really cool. Government is trying an old trick to regulate the internet called net neutrality. Remember this? They say it's because they want free speech and fairness on the internet. Since when does the federal government want free speech and fairness on the internet? They don't want that, really. It's a power grab using an old trick. So quickly, net neutrality is the notion that the FCC can create laws that would prevent internet service providers or ISPs from prioritizing, slowing down, or blocking content online. This was an Obama era law and it was struck down during the Trump administration. Now, why, you may ask yourself, would the federal government try this again right now? Is it because they've been told that they can no longer censor speech on the internet? They can try to censor speech on the internet. The only way you're going to censor speech on the internet is to erase the internet. That music like in terms of getting paid it's like the biggest thing and only all your art yeah, yeah, because that land is a is a is a is a the mind industry that I chose to be a part of. So it's like I, I accept that I'm not really but don't be a a a, a dominant at the same time. You gotta understand it was me as entertainment and this shit becomes self destruction too. Mm -hmm. Cause I ain't gonna entertain you. You know, some shit can be spoke on. Why? My other shit is, is to be continued. Is in terms of like every time it's mm, He got mad. He's like, man, you talking too much. If you cannot manage a property, you don't know the legals, the ins and outs, because right. you have a contract with your renter. And if you don't perform on your contract and you're and the and also the renter tears your property up, so just say you can just go and buy a hundred and fifty unit apartment house, you can do that, but there's not many people. Yeah. So that's why I'd be clear that our, our message here, Grant, your message is probably different than ours. But is to me is the management of the property and making it turn a profit is the hard part today. The raising the money is easy. There's a lot of financing for it, people are going to throw well. their money at you. Yeah, it's I don't know how. He, I mean, I don't. I don't know that I'd say it's easy. We've raised seven hundred million dollars. You, you, you still got to manage people, phone calls. You know, like it's not. I mean, when you say it's easy, it's not easy. Like we do it with no ads, Robert. No, I haven't spent any. I think I spent fifty grand in ads. So these big guys that we're competing with today, like if you can't move fast, you're not going to get the asset, as you know. Yeah, Grant. Grant, hang on. Not too many people are going to do what you do. Our audience wants to know how to get started right now. Okay. So okay. Please, well, wait, wait, please be respectful yeah. to our audience. Okay. Mm, yeah. I mean, he just went on there talking about how much he was making. Um, he didn't say how or any of the information that was really needed. Just how uh, they're making so much money that, you know, everyone else should be able to do it too. And they're cornering this, like, the point was that he had him on the show to give information about how to get to that spot. And all dude did was brag about it and talk about his own business. Get on top for it. This is what I'm getting into. 
Hmm. Uh, weather satellites yeah it's uh pretty crazy that it fell and they're just like surrounding it with cameras That's crazy. I never seen stuff like that. That was like entire <laughs> areas of land with multiple houses moving around in water and like an entire house falling into water right here. Like what in the world? No, no, no. Tennessee traded a tractor trailer filled with lunch meat for crack cocaine. What? This honest to God literally might be the most on par story <laughs> of 2024 so <laughs> how did guy find a crack dealer that wanted to trade crack for an entire truck filled with lunch meat i have so many questions cases solved in 2024. In 1975, three girls aged 11, 13, and 14 hitched a ride home. They hopped in a station wagon with an unknown male at around 10.45 p.m. When they got near their destination, he pulled out a gun and took the scared girls to a nearby cornfield. He violated one of the girls. He then tried to end the lives of all three by slashing and stabbing them. The girls were smart and played dead, and the unknown male fled the scene. The girls went to get help. All three survived. A sketch was developed, but no arrests were ever made. The case was reopened in 2018. Genetic genealogy testing helped authorities finally identify the man as Thomas Edward Williams. He died in a Texas prison in 1983 when he was 49 years old. All three victims are still alive and were grateful to get some justice even after almost 50 years. Now that, that's a crazy story. That, that's, it's real, but that's a wild story right there, man. Think about that. Like you go to finally find out who this person is. They finally figure it out, but the person is, is dead and was dead from being in prison. Yeah, I wonder what they're all running from. Because obviously that sound is fake in the background.
think it has to be. Yeah, that's wild. That's <laughs> really creepy vibes to that video. Ooh, you stressing on that thing. Is it gonna go? Oh, oh. You gotta shoot, right? That's good. That's nuts, dude. I'm glad you're okay. That's <laughs> I'm glad you're okay, man. That's an experience right there. Yeah, that last one's pretty wild, dude. I've seen tons of stuff up in the sky like that last one. I used to, when I was a kid, I was really into telescopes, so I had a few of them. But uh, I've seen tons of stuff like that. Nobody ever believed me. Uh, did you see how the moon is rusting? What? I, I've heard about it. Yep. So there's this kid that took, like, the most... Um, what, what like super it? high quality. The, like the most high quality picture of the moon ever taken. Or I saw this on NASA on their website in the article said, while the moon is airless, research indicates the presence of hematite, a form of rust that normally requires oxygen and water. This has scientists puzzled. Do you know what the word hematite? Hematite is a name that is derived from the Greek word meaning blood you're gonna go mm -hmm. a little okay call back yeah to the bible all right this is in joel i'm gonna two. act like i know where you're going with this i'm still like this is joel crazy. 2 31 through 32 verses 31 through 32 okay it says the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the lord comes and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. Those who the Lord calls. That's pretty interesting that the moon apparently is resting or looks like it is. Look at it. It's back. Right over there. Look. What is that?
Look at it. Straight down. No, that is kind of weird, but I really can't tell what it is because it was through the trees, man. It could be like drones. It could be anything, really. Oh, no. So I got a feeling like this is just a random theory, though. Like, it's for entertainment. I got a feeling that they're like doing all this stuff on purpose to make it to where everyone just is afraid to fly. So they're making flying ghetto and uh, they don't want us to travel anymore. Moving on. Anyone else besides me find this a little weird? All of the stuff that they are telling us to do it is when a it comes weird. to this eclipse. What do they know that we don't know? They're mm. telling us to get groceries. They're telling us to stock up on essentials. They're telling us to have cash on hand just in case. So what exactly do they know that we don't know? That first photo that you seen was a news station in uh, Arkansas. This one that you're seeing on screen is from a place in Ohio. So what exactly do they know is coming? Mm -hmm. What are they not telling us? This is some strange stuff indeed. You tell me what you think about all of this. They're even saying possible gas shortages. Very strange stuff is happening. That is kind of strange. strange <laughs> Why would there be a gas ahead. shortage over there? Well, be ready a lot of people are going to travel. Because you never know what's I don't coming know, next. It's a little weird. They are saying a whole lot of stuff to make it seem like a scary thing. But like, I don't know, man. The entire world is going through a historic shift in vibration. Ascending spiritually from the third dimension to the fifth. Mm -hmm. The 3D is the physical world in which we live and is known to everyone. The 5D is the non-physical world that is experienced by the spiritually awakened. In the process of spiritual awakening, your senses are heightened to adjust to new frequencies. The world is awakening. So the creation of the new earth can begin. The earth is going through an ascension and so is the physical body. Ascension is the process of raising your vibration, shedding your ego and shifting into an elevated level of consciousness. Agreed, agreed. We're all shifting and well, most of us are shifting and uh, it's something that we need to be prepared for. All right, so I got one more for you guys. No, oh, they're lost because of the smoke. Poor babies. Somebody come collect their horses. Maybe that's what they're trying to do. You just gotta follow them till they calm down. Anyways, that's another video for the archives, guys. Um, sorry for it being late. This would be the last late video. I made it late because there were three people who, on the poll out of like 50, there were three of you who were like, no, do videos in the middle of the night. Do night videos every day. But um, the poll out beat everybody, so we're going to be doing morning daily videos. All right. This is my last one for you guys here at night. Appreciate everybody for coming through. I hope everybody's doing well. Go ahead and do me a favor and hit that like, hit that subscribe. Share this video around on all your social medias. And uh, until next time, peace.